Brutal. There's there's a really key thing that that Kathy said of prices being set at the margin, and I would layer in another thing that I learned from her of um, what really matters is the the share of incremental growth. Um, and so you have very large bases, and so you could look at the banks and be like, well, how could crypto, you know, this kind of small thing, be disrupting these very large based banks? But if if crypto, when you look at these growth rates in the hundreds of percents, if that is eating the incremental growth share, that starts to weigh on bank growth expectations and all assets are priced based on expectations, right? And so that's where these seemingly small things that are hyper growth can have a significant impact on the growth expectations of much larger asset bases. Um, and so, you know, when we when we think about the yield market, you 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 have the people who are lending, and then also the people who are borrowing, right? Um, and when I at least think of myself down, I feel old for crypto, right? I'm 31. Um, like, <laughs> I'm I'm basically a crypto boomer now. I'll, I'll admit it. But um, like myself down, I I see people like increasingly asking like, hey, like, can I, can I use this to borrow against, right? Like if you, if you think of something like MakerDAO, um, that I can take out a loan 365 days a year, 24 um, seven, it's a flat rate. Um, and, you know, the, while, while makers rates, and when I say flat rate, like everyone gets the same rate, there's no preferential treatment. There are other systems that give you fixed rate lending um, and so that whole world is, is mushrooming and that's the, some of the incre incremental share. I think a thing I want to piece apart a little bit more here is this idea of the risk-free rate, um, because I, I think it could be so fundamental. So when you think of the, you know, U.S. treasuries, um, providing a risk-free rate, this is something that you look at a lot, Kathy, as like the, the base of valuation for, mm -hmm. for assets. Mm -hmm. And I want to call it a risk minimized rate. Um, because yeah. I think that, that yes. we just presume, you know, the U S is always going to remain solvent, but mm -hmm. there is still counterparty risk there. And so that there's a risk minimized rate, uh, in the meat space on, uh, T bills. And then, Ether is going to provide the most risk minimized yield in the crypto space. And, and I, I want to call it risk minimized because people are going to say, there's way too much risk in crypto. You can call it risk free. So then we just agree, OK, it is risk minimized. And then you start to look at what are the components that go into risk minimization? And this is where we get into the importance of decentralization, right, where not all proof of stake is created equal. Um, and you've got, you know, delegated versus the more pure proof of stake that, that Ethereum is um, working towards.